Hi, this is Christophe Impetiati for Bistake and welcome to this short video where we are going to discuss how to create a dimension using Turbo Integrator. First, we're going to review all the different tabs we're going to have to work with. Secondly, we're going to discuss the input file we're going to use to create the dimension, the CSV file. And lastly, we will set up and run the TI process. This is the screen you're getting when you create a new TI process. It has five tabs, as you can see at the top of the screen. The first one is the data source. That's the tab you use if you want to involve any external data in your process. Then you have variables and maps. You use these two tabs to create and specify the variables you want to use. And you tell TI, Turbo Integrator, what you're going to do with those variables. The advanced tab may be the most important of all contains all the scripts that will be executed when you run the process and the schedule tab obviously if you want to run this process on a regular basis. So once again the advanced tab contains all the scripts that will be executed when you run the TI process. Anything between the asterisk here is automatically generated by TI, the rest of the screen you can use to write your own code. The parameters tab allows you to create prompts and interact with the person running the process. The product tab will execute only once before we start processing the external data. Metadata and data tabs will be executed for each record we are processing. I'm talking about the external data. And the epilogue tab will be executed only once at the end of the process. In this example, we are creating a product dimension, and this is the CSV file we're going to use as input in our TI process. We will use the first three columns to create the hierarchical structure. The first column is the product name, the second column is the product group, and the third column is the overall total. The fourth column is the product number, and we will use it to create an alias attribute. And the last column is the shipping method. We will use that column to create a text attribute. I am now going to use the product to create the process and create my product dimension using TI. So I'm an architect and I'm going to right click processes to create a new TI process. And this is the screen I was describing earlier on. So I'm going to specify I want a data source. I specify text because it's a CSV file. I click the browse button and select my file. You have a preview button at the bottom of the screen to make sure you're looking at the right data and also to make sure your file doesn't start with a, um, a row title. If it was, you would specify a one in that box here. Now we're done specifying the input file. We are going to click the next tab and specify our variables. These are the columns from my file and this column allows me to recognize what they are. So the first thing I do, I come here and I give my variables a meaningful name. So my first column is the product, my second column is the product group, my third column is my total, my fourth column is the product number, and finally my fifth column is my shipping method, so I call it shipping. It is good practice to keep a V in front of your variables. The next thing you do, and it's on the same screen, you specify the contents. So for each variable you specify what you want to do with it. So I want to use the product name as an element, so the product will create an element for each product in the dimension and then I want to consolidate those product names into the product groups and those product groups roll up to the total, the overall total. The last two columns being my attributes, the first one is an alias attribute, the second one is a text attribute. So now we're done setting up our variables, we can move on and click the next tab, Maps. We just follow the tabs we have from left to right. So it says at the cube level, what do you want to do? Do you want to create a cube, load a cube? We are not doing anything with cubes, so we can move on. We just want to create a dimension. So we use this screen here. We double click that box and specify the name of the dimension we want to create. Then we specify the action. We want to create this new dimension. 
and very importantly you click that box element order to specify the organization of your elements you want to organize those elements hierarchically every time you have consolidations in your dimension you must do that you must specify automatic hierarchical structure and just click OK we can now move on to the next tab the consolidations in the consolidations tab you just specify how you're gonna roll up the different elements in your dimension by clicking the first triangle here we specify that the product is rolling up to the groups and by clicking the second triangle we specify that the groups will roll up to the total if you want to you can change the way the elements are ordered in each group by using these two options on the right we can move on to the final tab the attributes tab in which we are going to specify for the two variables we mention as attributes we want to specify which element they they are attached to the name of the attribute which action we are going to um, to perform and what type of attribute they are so for the first one the product number we're gonna say it applies to the product and uh, the name of this uh, attribute will be called P number for product number I want to create it and it's an alias type the second one the shipping method also apply to the element called product what do I want to call it I'm gonna call it the same name I'm gonna call it shipping I want to create this attribute and it's a text attribute now we've done all the hard work the only thing we need to do is to click the last tab advance in which you just have to click the tabs all of them one by one and as you can tell between the asterisk the product has generated the scripts equivalent to what you're trying to achieve in this case creating a dimension so by just clicking those tabs only once, one at a time, all of them, the product will generate all the scripts and that's all you have to do. In this example I'm not going to schedule the process to run on a regular basis but if you wanted to you could click the final tab and you could specify the, the frequency of that uh, TI process. I'm just going to click the save button and uh, give it what I called a smart name the advice we give is to give a name such as action first so I'm creating a dimension so I call it create dim I specify the name of the dimension I am creating and it's coming from a CSV file and I use uppercase at the end of this the benefit of this name is by reading it I know exactly what it does and where the data is coming from I just click OK. I am going to run the TI process by clicking the triangle at the top of the screen. The process ran successfully. I'm going to double check that everything is fine. So I'm going back into Architect, locate my dimension, double click on it, maximize this window and make sure my dimension looks the way I want it. With my overall total at the top, my different product groups, and within each product group my products. Thank you very much for your attention. This was Christophe Impecetti for Bistec and please feel free to give us a call if you need any more information.